Tweak, my favorite little queer. Things are finally turning around for my little homosexual son. I'm gonna be honest, admitting Tweak is my favorite character kinda brings me a little bit of shame. The fact that my favorite character and my favorite show teeters between being a fringe major character and non-existent in some episodes kind of makes me question the qualities I look for in characters that I enjoy. Also, I don't want to be lumped in with a particular group of Creek shippers. You know the ones I'm talking about. I don't just like Tweak because he's gay, all right? I like his personality and his relationship with Craig has nothing to do with it. I'm gonna say it, Craig isn't even in my top five. <laughs> not even my top six, not even top seven. You know where he is? Number eight. Yeah, 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 I said it. Fuck that autistic kid. Fuck that autistic kid. Actually, I probably shouldn't, I probably shouldn't say stuff like that. I, I like Craig, uh, you know, just having a little bit of fun, just being a little silly is all. Anyways, Tweak. This is, this is about Tweak. Yes, Tweak. Today, we are going to be looking at Tweak's character and how it progresses across the show. Tweak's first appearance in the show and first major role comes in the episode Gnomes. And group two will be Stan, Kyle, Eric, Kenny, and... and Tweak. <laughs> oh, not Tweak. We don't want to be in a group with Tweak. This is definitely one of my favorite episodes from the primitive slog that is seasons one through three. Listen, the seasons are okay, all right? But it's clear that they're still trying to get their footing in those first three seasons. But with that being said, this episode at least hits the mark. This episode introduces Tweak who kind of appears out of thin air by the way like he wasn't even there when the episode started he just he just appears like out of nowhere i don't know if this is a continuity error if it's intentional but i think it's really funny tweak is introduced as this overly anxious spazzy tweaker with adhd his parents certainly don't help him by continually funneling down coffee down this poor boy's gullet hey do you ever think maybe you shouldn't give your son coffee like how do you mean like, look at him. He's always shaking and nervous. Ah! Oh, that. He has ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder. If you've played Stick of Truth, you know that it's not only coffee, but I'm going to stick to the actual show here in my analysis. So he's shown as this kid that you kind of instantly feel bad for. It just seems like everything in the world is trying to stress him out. Everything from the world going after him to his own perception of himself. It honestly breaks my heart a little bit. I'm to blame for all this. I'm to blame for everything. Get this kid some therapy or some. My God. I'd argue that Tweak is one of the most sympathetic characters in the show up there with Kenny and Butters. I'd actually say Tweak ends up being more sympathetic than Butters because of the way they absolutely fucking assassinated his character in later seasons and episodes. Can I mention how much I hate season 20? God, I hate season 20. Fuck, I hate season 20. God, such a fucking terrible season. Okay, I I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Uh, let's stay on track. Tweak is instantly lovable with his introduction, and he shows that he can bring a lot to the table. Tweak's second major appearance comes in the episode Tweak vs. Craig, where the boys set up Tweak and Craig to get into a fight. Kind of funny that this is their first major interaction, knowing how it uh, ends up. But this episode does end up reinforcing a lot of what we learned about Tweak's character before, especially how maddening it must be to live in his household. Dad, if some kid at school wants to fight me, what should I do? Son, let me tell you a little story about when your mother and I first met. You see, a long time ago, there were a lot of guys who were after your mother. She used to be very attractive. It's true, I was. Well, when I started courting your mother, there was this big, muscular football player named Quib. who didn't take too kindly to me. He wanted your mother all to himself. And so, one day, he challenged me to a fight. Well? Well what, honey? <laughs> what happened? Oh, I, I don't know. He moved away or something. Yes, I think that's right. Ah! You guys never helped me! Your stories never go anywhere! I hate it! I want out! I want out! I don't blame him for being a little infuriated. While reinforcing his already built character traits, it does introduce the fact that Tweak is a little bit manipulatable because the boys literally just have to say Craig said something and it gets him to fight him. Whoa, Tweak, did you hear that? What? Craig just called you a boner. Ah! Uh, we just have to keep throwing gas in the fire. Yeah. Now, I will say him being manipulatable is not at all a unique character trait in the show. Most of the boys are manipulatable at some point or another when it comes to this show. It's important to remember they're like, nine years old. Also, Tweak is a pretty formidable fighter. This is a minor thing, but the fact that he sent Craig to the hospital, pretty cool, shows he's got some power to those punches. I mean, he ended up in the hospital too, but he sent Craig to the hospital. 
Tweet kind of stays on the sidelines for a few seasons after that, but then he becomes prominent again after the episode Professor Chaos in season six. Now this is the season where Kenny died like for real, so the boys were looking for a replacement friend. For the first half of the season, the replacement friend was Butters, but the boys decided, hey, this isn't really working out because Butters is Butters, you know? I love being you guys new friend. Yes, well Butters, it's just not working out. Not working out? I'm afraid we're gonna have to let you go as our friend. I mean, I would never fire Butters, but this is when they look for another replacement for Kenny and where Tweak comes back into the fold. They decide to have this like fun little game show competition to see who gets to be their fourth friend, which is kind of funny. Tweak, now there's an interesting choice. Tweak has a lot of qualities that I look for in a friend. What if they don't pick me? What if they get us all, man? I mean, Christ, if they can get to the Pentagon, then they can get to us all, man. While this episode doesn't really center Tweak and Tweak doesn't play much of a major role in it, I did think it was important to mention because this is the episode where he is elevated, or at least revealed to be, elevated to main character status. Will Professor Chaos's latest plot succeed and be the final undoing of Earth? And which boy has been chosen to be the replacement for Kenny? And which of these six South Park residents was killed and will never be seen again? The answer to those questions will be answered right now. No, Tweak, Miss Chokes on Dick. It's an important episode when we talk about Tweak's character development, and it's important to mention because it leads us into his most important role throughout the entire show. This is the first actual episode where Tweak serves as a main character. In this episode, the boys put sea creatures in Miss Chokes on Dick's coffee and later find out that she died. Listen to me. We must take a strict vow of silence. Jesus Christ, we killed her! Shh, tweak, shut the hell up! Have I mentioned how bad I feel for this little guy? Have I mentioned that? The boys think they killed her, even though that wasn't true. They didn't kill her. But it doesn't help that the news report says that there is semen found in her stomach. Tweak tries to walk away from the boys, showing that, you know, he's not a complete fucking moron, but this doesn't end up working for him. Hey, Tweak, you're in this just as much as we are. What? I told you not to put the sea people in your coffee. I wasn't even there when you did it. Yeah, but you're our new friend and that makes you c c peeable. In fact, it makes you the most responsible. Tweak, you might have to take the fall on this one. <laughs> also, this clip has nothing to do with Tweak's character development. I just want to show it because it's really funny. We need you to promise not to tell anybody. Now, children, every problem can be worked out. What was it? We killed our teacher and they found our semen in her stomach. Oh, children, that's a problem we all have to face one time or another. Here. Let me sing you a little song that might cheer you up. Sometimes you kill your teacher and they find your semen in the stomach and the- Wait, what's the what? So what should we do? Anyways, just wanted to show that. Tweak's overly emotional nature is particularly funny in this episode because while the boys are like stoically covering this up, like, oh, just cover up, don't say a thing. Tweak is acting like the only normal person here. He's acting like a normal person would in this situation, which is fucking, oh my God, what the fuck? Actually freaking out. I guess this really is a big deal. We've only got one option, you guys. We're gonna have to go to that hospital where they're doing the autopsy and get our semen back ourselves. <laughs> I pulled out my hair! Everyone's so nonchalant about these clearly awful situations, and this builds a trend in Tweak's character that we see throughout the show. The uncaring world of South Park, where Tweak is frequently the only one acting like a normal person, the only one acting accordingly to these situations, which gives him a lot of relatability. So they get the semen off the autopsy table because they want to get rid of the evidence. The guys! Uh Miss Jokes on Dick stinks inside. Yeah. So after it's explained to them that semen and sea people aren't the same thing by chef, they end up putting this semen vial into the tank with the sea people. So this actually creates a society, and the society ends up worshipping both Tweak and Cartman as gods. Me? No man! I don't want to be a god! That is way too much pressure! That is bull crap. You better stop worshiping him, see people. That single statement from Tweak explains a lot about his character, more than you would initially think. If it wasn't clear, Tweak just wants to live a normal life. He doesn't want to have glory or fame. He just wants to live a normal life that's a bit less stressful. 
Unfortunately, his stress is just starting. You know what I would do if I was a god, Sir Elk? I'd make everyone watching, I'd make them all send me a dollar so I could buy a $700 tweak plush that I totally need. I really need it, guys. While the other episodes put Tweak in some stressful situations, this episode leans into it. Tweak does not get a break this whole episode. In the start, Cartman forces Tweak to make 50 hats in one day as a free gift for attending a club to stop Spielberg and George Lucas from changing their movies for money. Then after unknowingly creating the rallying cry, free hat, for the defense of like a literal baby murderer, Tweak is then forced to go on national TV and defend the baby murder, which by the way, absolutely slays it. Just answer me this, Tweak. What do you see as positive about toddler murder? Uh, uh, it's, it's easy? Yes, it is easy. So fucking true, Tweak. Go off. So back to the whole directors changing their movies for money thing. The boys come with the plan to take the original Raiders of the Lost Ark print so the directors can't alter it. Tweak tries to get out for the second time because God knows it's what's best for him. No! We're just gonna fly to California and break into George Lucas's house. What's stressful about that? <gasps> okay, Tweak, let me tell you something. You've been our new friend now for two weeks, okay? And I've gotta be honest with you, it isn't going well. <gasps> People aren't that into you, Tweak. They find you kind of annoying. Now I'd say you've got one last nice shot here and I don't want you to blow it, okay? Does that help take the stress off? After getting caught in George Lucas's house, Tweak is the only one who escapes. When he escapes, he plans to rescue his friends. Tweak, who somehow got a rocket launcher, don't know how that happened, don't know how he got that, but he makes an offer to the directors that he'll let the tapes go if he gets back his friends. And this shows a more selfless side of Tweak that we haven't really seen up to this point. He was sympathetic before, sure, but the fact that he went out of his way to help these boys who have been nothing but trouble for him shows he also has a really good heart. Even though this attempt doesn't end up working, this shows that Tweak is willing to put his own life on the line and sacrifice himself for his friends, which is incredibly admirable. This episode certainly builds more on Tweak's horrific home life. In response to the rise of child abductions, his parents decide to prepare Tweak for a child abduction in the most insane, psychopathic way possible. <laughs> Bang, you're dead, Tweak. What? You failed the test, son. Didn't I tell you not to open the door for anybody except your mother and I? Oh. What if that had been a child abductor pretending to be a police officer, Tweak? He would have sprayed your brains all over the floor and then taken your body off to the woods. <laughs> this expands on Tweak's parents' prior history of abuse. Not only do they give Tweak excessive amounts of coffee, which clearly causes some neurological damage, they pull guns on him, heighten his anxiety and fear, and cause probably a lot of trauma. Tweak then sees a ghost and tells him good stuff and teaches him a message that he does need to hear that not all people are bad. But of course it's Tweak so it didn't end up being a ghost it was a child abductor and that in turn makes him more fearful. Those are the main character points that happen in this episode. It's not a ton but it is incredibly useful information when understanding Tweak. In the same way Tweak appeared out of thin air, he also vanishes from the plot and story in the same way. After child abduction is not funny, he's kicked out of the main group with no explanation or no scenes showing why he was kicked out. I don't know if Tweak had a negative reception when it came out. I mean, Cartman does allude to him having a negative reception, but I mean, there was nothing. He's just out of the group. It's not like Butters where he was fired and there was an explanation given. Tweak is just gone. Based on the other episodes, the educated theory that I'd like to go with is that Tweak just had enough and he decided not to be a part of the group on his own volition because, well, he tried to leave two other times so it would make sense. I wish they actually showed the process of that happening though. It just sucks that they didn't. After season six, episode 11, he doesn't play a role in the show for 13 seasons, 172 episodes. You see, this is why I feel bad having him as my favorite character. It's to the point where if I don't know someone very well, I'll tell them that Butters is my favorite character. It's hard to explain Tweak is my favorite character, especially if you're like a casual South Park watcher. Like some casuals might not even know who Tweak is. But after this plotline hiatus, he does come back and he comes back with a bang. 
So Tweak X Craig is an iconic episode when we talk about the development of Tweak's character. It starts off by Wendy showing some questionable art of Tweak and Craig, to say the least. What? Tweak's parents, for once, show some actual compassion towards their son. And Tweak's dad says that he'll be a better father because Tweak is gay and gives him some money, which I find funny. For Tweak's sake, I hope that his parents are keeping their word because God knows he needs that. So Tweak and Craig end up building some animosity because they're being lumped in as gay and they don't like that. So they end up fighting. And of course, PC principal just chalks it down as a lover's quarrel. So Craig gets this idea and goes to Tweak's house and asks him to stage a fake breakup because then people won't be drawing stuff of him anymore. Ironically, staging the fake breakup is where the seeds of their actual relationship later on come into play. <laughs> Craig motivates Tweak and pushes him really outside of his comfort zone because Tweak doesn't want to do it initially. One may say that Craig motivates Tweak a bit, a bit too much. It's just that people are different. That's all. Uh-huh. And who the hell is Michael? Huh? You want to tell me that? Uh, what, what are you talking about? I went through your phone when we went out last night, Craig. I saw your text to Michael about hooking up with him. Wait, uh, that, that's not what happened. Oh, it's not? No. Uh, look, we both know this is for the better. Oh, don't use that lame shit on me, man. You don't want to feel bad, so you try and tell me what I want? Tweak, don't make me out to be the bad guy here. No, you're not the bad guy. You're never the bad guy, are you? You you just step on people and you use them. You're going too far, dude. This is, like, totally not necessary. I'm going too far? What is wrong with you? Obviously, this makes Craig a bit upset. So Tweak goes over to Craig's house and explains, hey, maybe we should get back together. And he also tells him how he made him feel a certain way that no one's ever made him feel and stuff like that, which is kind of a cute scene. The episode ends with Craig holding Tweak's hand, walking in the street, and for once, Tweak actually has something go for him. This episode changes a lot for Tweak's character outlook because it gives him something that he hasn't had up to this point. Someone who actually grounds his anxieties. I actually already made a video talking about Tweak and Craig's relationship dynamic. It's actually the first South Park video I have on this channel. It's an incredibly important moment for both of these characters. If you want a more in-depth look to their relationship, I suggest you watch that video after this one. But to put it simply, Tweak and Craig balance each other out in such a beautiful way and it makes like a perfect couple dynamic. It ends up honestly being one of the most wholesome things on the entire show. I will actually mention a critique here and say that this episode does end up binding Tweak and Craig at the hip. It does end up sacrificing their individual characters a bit for the dynamic, but overall I still see this episode as incredibly positive for Tweak's character in terms of both something actually going right for him and in terms of the show as well. I also feel like they weren't doing anything with his character up to this point anyway, so it's nice to see him utilized. Put It Down is where we start to see how Tweak and Craig manage the problems of their relationship. The episode starts with Tweak having a bit of a rough time due to some of the aggressive things President Garrison was tweeting. Craig plays the role of the rational, while Tweak plays the role of the emotional. And while it's a pretty cliche relationship dynamic, I think it's effective here. So Tweak desperately wants to show the North Koreans that, hey, not everyone agrees with the president. So Craig recommends, hey, why don't you make them some cupcakes? Well, what do you know how to make? Um, cupcakes? All right, go home and make some cupcakes, honey. Okay. This shows off another talent he has, which is baking. Once again, another minor thing, but I like mentioning these little interesting things about the characters. Of course, nothing goes right for Tweak, so it ends up backfiring. Tweak then goes to vent to Craig in his own little unique way. <laughs> hey, Tweak. So Craig suggests, hey, let's do something fun. Get your mind off that person trying to nuke ya. <laughs> Once again, Craig plays the role of trying to calm down Tweak, but this doesn't end up working. And I don't blame Tweak, because when pictures like this are on the news, 
yeah, I'm going to be a little fucking freaked out. But yeah, Mr. Garrison literally just doesn't let Tweak have a moment to rest. This all culminates with Tweak and Craig getting into an argument and Tweak explaining exactly how he feels. I'm trying to make you feel better. Well, maybe I don't want to feel better right now. <laughs> okay, but think about that. That actually doesn't make any sense. Why do you have to be so logical? I don't need you to problem solve all the time. I need you to... Uh, I don't know! Week, honey, all week you've been freaking out and I've been the one forced to deal with it. You haven't been dealing with it. You've been trying to make it go away because my emotions are freaking you out! <laughs> Tweak, North Korea isn't bombing anyone. They would lose the support of China and that would there be- There you go again! Stop preaching facts to me! It's not what I need! Well, I'm sorry that I've actually in control of my goddamn emotions, ya baby! Oh, see, now you made me lose control of my emotions. God damn it. I fucking love that quote from Greg, by the way. Okay, but, but think about it. That actually doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. After this, Craig goes to lunch and Heidi actually makes a speech that resonates with him. Eric, you need to stop. What they're doing is important. They're doing a memorial service with speeches and crying. What's that gonna solve? It's not about problem solving, Eric. It's about people getting together and feeling what they need to feel. People need help sorting out their emotions sometimes. And the best thing isn't always quick answers, but just being there, supporting each other, and talking through those feelings. So Craig talks to Tweak and lets him vent out his true frustrations. And the episode ends with Tweak making a song, playing piano, as Craig is the lead vocalist. Once again, Tweak can play piano effectively. Dude's fucking massively talented. It's a really sweet episode, and I will admit after re-watching it, it does have a bit of a ham-fisted message, but either way, it's a sweet episode. It's nice. It's it's cute. Before we hop into the overview, I do want to give a bit of an honorable mention here. I'd like to mention the post-COVID special where Tweak and Craig played a pretty prominent role, and they stuck together after all that time, which is really nice to see. I'm not going to go too deep into the post-COVID special because I don't think it reveals anything new about Tweak's character. But I thought it would be worth a mention, you know, the fact that they stuck together into adulthood, you know, I think that's worth a mention. Also, I don't have access to the post-COVID special right now because it's on Paramount Plus and my trial expired and I'm not fucking buying Paramount Plus. So yeah, I can't rewatch it anyway. So that's the whole journey when it comes to Tweak's character up to season 26. I can't wait to see how the show shakes up the character and uses it in the future. He's a supporting character, so I wouldn't be surprised if he stays on the sidelines for a while, but it'd be nice to see him have like maybe a plot line or two in the next season or next couple seasons. Like I said, he's my favorite character. And for a character that doesn't take up much screen time, he really makes his screen time count when he's there. Season six tweak is my favorite tweak and I kind of miss those episodes, but I'm also excited to see what they do with his character in the future and the whole Craig and Tweak dynamic I think is pretty damn cute. Thank you guys for watching this character analysis. Based on the fact that this script is 3,000 words long, I imagine it's gonna be a bit of a long video, so thanks for sticking it out. Thank you guys for being here. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you guys actually enjoyed this video. You know, it really does help a lot. I'm trying to make this YouTube thing work, and I think I have a chance. You guys are the best. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye bye I should put these on my shoulder. Can I put these on you? Oh look, it's riding you. Oh. Oh, you just threw them off, huh? Oh, you're jealous, huh? You don't want you don't want anyone else on my shoulder? Okay, sir, I'll fine. Fine. I'll adhere to your demands. <laughs>